But I just want to stand before you, amen, this morning, amen, well, it's a big good day anyway, and I want to share something very special. I believe we have people in our congregation, if not all, amen, or they're going through some things. In their families, loved ones, community, whatever the situation may be on, in the workplace, amen. And I just want to remind you, amen, that to endure to the end. Amen. Endure yes. to the end. Yes. And if you were turning your Bible, amen, to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 4. I'd like to start reading in your hearing from verse 6. Now, when you hear this scripture by his own admission, 2 Timothy chapter 4. By his own admission, Paul, the Apostle Paul, knew that his days were running out. And when he wrote this particular letter to this church and to his spiritual son, he was in a dark, dank dungeon in a Roman prison. Yes, 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 yes. And he wrote these words. He said, For I am already being poured out yes, yes. as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, and I have kept the faith. He said, finally, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved His appearing. Amen. Notice that the Apostle Paul says that Amen. For I am now ready, ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit in our midst today. And how that we were able to just worship you in spirit and in truth. And I believe you have a rain of word for us. That Lord Jesus, that will encourage yes. and inspire and lift us up because you are indeed the lifter of our heads. Oh, yes. Lord, I just pray that you yes. bless the rest of this service, yes. bless the rest of this day. Yes. Lord, we end for a treat today. It's just so good that our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And Lord, it's good that we know you and, and Lord Jesus, you have blessed us and touched yes. us in many areas. Yes. And now we want to just thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. You may be seated if you can. Also, I think today we want to say happy anniversary, I believe, to the Pierre family. Amen. Sister Pierre, I have to, she'll have to celebrate. Amen. The birthday, I mean, anniversary by herself today with her family. Amen. But, uh, Amen. That's all right. This too shall pass, and the main one will be here. <laughs> Amen. Uh, but we congratulate you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this particular time, it was about when Paul wrote this letter, somewhere between 67 A.D. in that year. And uh, there was a madman named Nero. He was an emperor of the vast Roman Empire. The monarch, among other things, had turned Christian persecution into a sport. People used to fill the Colosseums in Rome just to see the Christians, those believers, that were martyred mm -hmm. for their faith. Shredded by lions. Many of them lived a 
quiet, peaceful life. But the same could not be said about the Apostle Paul. He lived a very adventuresome life. He turned the world upside down. Every corner that he found himself on, he made it a pulpit to proclaim the gospel. Amen. His ministry was bold and courageous. Not to say the other ministries weren't. But his ministry, amen, was bold. God used him in a special way. Anyone that read, that writes the inspired Word of God over half of the New Testament has something to say. Amen? God used in a special way. But Paul, in his ministry, he came into conflict with Jews as well as Gentiles. Amen. The authority and had been many stormy and combative situations in Paul's ministry. Paul really, while he's in prison there waiting for his execution, Paul could well have been Nero's prize catch. And there was no way the unrelenting emperor was going to set Paul free at this time. Because he had been in prison many times, but they let him go. But they weren't going to let Paul go this time. No siree. He was a prize catch. If we let if we let him if we get rid of Paul, this is Nero's thinking and others, then we'll be able to stamp out Christianity. We all look back at that particular time. And that was the fathers from the truth, wasn't it? Amen. Because you can't, you can't stamp out God. You can't get rid of God, amen, or His Word. They tried down through eons of time. Yet, with death hovering over his head like a dark thundercloud, Paul rejoiced, though he did not boast. In the wonderful victories that the Lord had given him, he rejoiced, writing as I stated before to the young, beloved son-like friend Timothy, Paul confidently proclaimed, he said this, he said, I have fought a good fight, yes. I have finished my course, yes. I have kept the faith. Yes. Yes. Now, this extraordinary statement should be the summary, listen to this, it should be the summary for every Christian life Amen. when his or her time come to be with the Lord. Amen. That should be our testimony. Yes. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Yes. Can we say that now? Yes. Yes. Now, a closer examination of Paul's life and endurance can go a long way in helping us, you and I, in this 21st century to live such a life before God that we too can one day make this same claim. Mm -hmm. Fighting the good fight. Yes. Let's look at Paul's example. Point number one. Amen. Now let me ask you a question, church. Do you ever feel like that you're in a boxing match? Oh yeah. I see some looking at me grinning. Do you ever feel like that you're in a boxing match? Do you ever get the feeling? That when the alarm clock goes off in the morning that wakes you up, it's more like a bell signaling the beginning of another round in your heavyweight bout. If the answer is yes, don't be surprised. Paul certainly 
understood that life in a daily battle yes. with mm -hmm. opponents who isn't fooling around. Yes. All right. Let me just stop right there and say to you, our adversary, the devil, the flesh, and the world, they're not fooling around. They're trying to take you out. Amen. Right. If the Lord would just lift the hedge of protection from around us, we would be amazed how God has dispatched His angel and the Holy Spirit that goes along beside us to protect us, amen, from what we're going through. Amen. Because the Bible says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against power, against the ruler of darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness yes. in high places in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Oh, yes. In other words, what I read and you study and we read and what we're going through, and some of us are experiencing this oh, yes. today. Amen. If you haven't experienced it yet, you will be in a battle. Oh, yes. Amen. You may be in the middle of one right now, or you may just be coming out of one. But hold up. Let me tell you, in a broken world, in a perverse world, in a crooked world, in which we live and try to live a Christian life that's pleasing to God, you are going to be in a battle. You are going to suffer persecution. One foot in the world and the other, amen. Mm -hmm. On the fence, yeah. then the devil is not going to bother you. He already have you. All right, come on. Amen. But the moment you dedicate your life yeah. to the Lord and say, yes. Lord, I want you to change my heart. I want to be more committed yes. to the kingdom work. Look out. The battle is raging. Oh, yeah. You're in a battle. Not only are you in a battle, but I'm going to tell you, uh -huh. you're on the front line. Oh, yeah. Amen. You're in the foxhole. Oh, yeah. Amen. The enemy is firing those fire, fiery darts at you. Yes. But you got to keep your armor on. Keep that shield of faith up. The quench all the fiery darts of faith. Keep that faith in that helmet of salvation on. that sword of the spirit whirling. Oh, yes. Amen. The word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. The spirit of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, Paul, he faced this struggle every day as he set out on his missionary journeys across the Near East and to a lesser extent across Europe sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. He shared the gospel with hostile Yes. Violent crowds. Yep. A perfect example of Paul's strategy yeah. can be found in the book of Acts, as I told you last week. Mm -hmm. And Paul and Barnabas, they arrived on their first missionary journey yeah. in the island of Cyprus. Uh -huh. Scripture tells us that when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogue of the Jews. And when they had gone through the Isle of Pappas mm -hmm. yeah. in Acts chapter 13, from that moment that Paul arrived in a new city, he would make his way straight to the synagogue. Amen. And then he would proceed to every public speaking place possible in order to preach the gospel. Uh -huh. Let me tell you something, my friend. I just told you, everywhere Paul found himself, whether he was in prison, yes. whether he was on the street corner, or whether he was walking, amen, wherever, in the home, or wherever he found himself, he proclaimed the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. He repeated it over and over, the gospel. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Oh yes. oh, yes. Through his life, Paul traveled uh -huh. to Iconium, yeah. Lystra, uh -huh. Derby, mm -hmm. Antioch, oh, yes. Philippi, uh -huh. Thessalonica, oh, yes. Berea, <laughs> Athens, Athens, Corinth, Corinth. Ephesus, Ephesus, and Rome. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Amen. 
how is the Apostle Paul received? Here's what he says, amen, in the Scripture. Mm -hmm. I believe 2 Corinthians, he says this. He said, listen. Mm -hmm. He said, this is how I was received. He said, of oh, the Jews five times, amen, five times I received 40 stripes, save one. Mm -hmm. They beat him, his own people. He said, three times I was beaten with rod. Mm -hmm. He said, one time I was stoned left for dead. Mm -hmm. He said, three times I suffered shipwreck. Yeah. He said, a night and a day I have been in a deep. Oh, yeah. He said, and in a journey often in perils of water, dangers of water. Yes. Amen. In perils of robber. Uh -huh. He got robbed. Mm -hmm. Amen. In perils by my own countrymen. In perils by the heathen. Oh, yeah. In perils in danger in the sea, in pearls among false brethren. He said this, he said in weariness and painfulness, in watching often, in hunger and thirst, in fasting, often in cold and nakedness. Sound like Job, doesn't he? You see what I'm saying, my friend? He said all this in, in Corinthians, I'm sorry, 11, 24 through 27. And yet Paul kept on, he kept on slugging it out, so to speak. Amen. He stayed in the fight. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. They would knock him down, but he would get up again. Hallelujah. That's, that, that, that's instructions for us. Yes. Hallelujah. And Paul just simply came to this conclusion in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 30. He said, if I must need glory, I will glory of the things which concern my infirmity. In other words, what Paul is saying, yes, I did all of this traveling in those days, amen, over 1,500 miles, amen. He traveled, establishing churches, but he didn't brag about the churches that he planted or established. Brother McLeod, you know what he bragged about? He said, you might see me limping. You might see me bent over. Yes. Can't straighten up. Yes. You might see me have some little rheumatism yes. in my legs, in my knees. Uh -huh. Amen. You may see, amen. You may see the wrinkle, the sunburn on my skin. Yes. You may see my hair bleach white. But he said, you know what? He said, I Yeah. 
with spiritual forces uh -huh. that would knock him down, but not out. Yeah. Amen. He said, I must need glory. Uh -huh. I would glory in the thing uh -huh. that concerned my infirmity. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Such was the heart of Paul. Uh -huh. Perhaps Paul could be considered mm -hmm. the greatest fighter. Oh, yeah. The greatest fighter. Oh, yeah. Of all time. Amen. Endure to the end. Oh, Endure to the end. Yeah. That I will trust in the Lord. Yeah. Let us stand together. Oh, yes.
you're just saying, you may say, Pastor, thank God I'm not living in the day of the Apostle Paul. I want to tell you something. You're still in the battle. Yes, sir. Some of you, amen, could be trapped in a bad marriage. My Lord Jesus. Some of you may be bearing the agony of losing a loved one. Some circumstances often knock the fight right out of us. That's right. But how easy would it be just to give up? To give in to the foe. And just tell the devil, well, you win. This is just the way life is. And then, when you say that, let me tell you something. When you give in to the circumstances and give up, and I know sometimes, amen, we feel like doing that. But let me just tell you today, the Lord... Let me by to tell you this, whatever you're facing. You see, one thing that happens, you say, well, that never happens to me. When you give up, when you give in to the devil, you will neglect to read your Bible with confidence. That's right. And you will neglect, you will refuse to attend church. Amen. You will cut yourself off from the sweet fellowship Amen. of the Lord. Amen. Well, Pastor, how do we go on fighting a good fight when our circumstances continue to knock us down? Well, you know what, Paul? He was a master. And he said this. We're going to pray. Paul just... Listen, our opponent is spiritual. Really. Our opponent is spiritual. It may be somebody in the neighborhood, it may be in the family, it may be in the church. You see, what happened is, is the devil dispatches, he dispatches, now I'm not telling you that the person is full of the devil, no, he dispatches demons. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Try to cause, stir up little yes, demons. Yes, yes, yes. You know what I call it? I call it guerrilla warfare. I call it terrorism. You see, the terrorists, a lot of times, are guerrilla warfare. All they want to do is to hinder and to maim, to maybe a, a, a landmine or some kind of mine or some kind of booby trap go off, to maim your foot, or blow your leg off or arm off, to, to incapacitate you. That's, that's, that's the one of his strategies. You see, he doesn't, he doesn't face you head on because the devil knows that greater than Jesus Christ is within you and the Holy Spirit than he is in the world. So he tries other strategies. Amen? But you know what Paul said? Think about this. Our opponent is spirit, not flesh. We need to fight him in spirit and not the flesh. That means calling upon the Lord to fight for us. Amen? Amen. Amen. To fight for us. Jesus. Amen. And then he says this. Yes. Think on these, these scriptures. Yes. I can do all things through Christ yes. which strengthens yes. me. Yes. Philippians 4.13. Uh -huh. Amen. You see, know ye not that your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you and I. Amen. He's in you and I. Then he said this. He said, walk in the Spirit that you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And he said, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Paul never even tried to fight his battle on his own strength, but by the Spirit of God that was in him. And he tells each and every one of us to do the same. Hallelujah. Do the same. Next week I want to talk about finishing the course. Finishing the course. Paul, he said so many times, I refuse, Brother Marshall, to look behind. That's right. Look behind in distress and discouragement. 
He said, but I press on. I look forward. Get your eyes out of the rear view, rear view mirror. Amen. Amen. Look at the road, the future behind. Matter of fact, better than that, look a little higher and look at Jesus. Jesus. If Jesus has ever answered a prayer for you, amen, and you can witness to that, what makes you think he's going to let you down? What makes you think that he's not going to answer this? The only thing that you can come up with it's not time for him to move yet. That's right. It's not time for him to move yet. That's right. But I'm going to wait on the Lord. That's right. I'm going to wait again. I'm going to wait on the Lord. Right. Amen. And I'm going to trust in him. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, use us today. Continue to use us. 